Yes, NAFAC stands for Naval Facilities Engineering Command, and we are the systems command that builds and uh, maintains the facilities that uh, the Navy and the Marine Corps use in the, in the execution of their mission. Uh, we've got professionals, uh, civil engineer corps officers, civilians, contractors, who design uh, professional engineers, professional architects, uh, and uh, sustain. We've got a large, talented, uh, blue-collar workforce that uh, works at every Navy Marine Corps base around the world uh, to make sure that these facilities meet the needs of our sailors and Marines. Uh, we also have a group of professionals who support the Navy Expeditionary Combat Command. And so we purchase and field some of the equipment that they need to execute their mission. We've got groups of people who support uh, contingency engineering reach back. So anywhere in the world that uh, a disaster may happen, a humanitarian assistance mission or a, a, a humanitarian assistance mission or some sort of uh, natural disaster, we have groups of people who can help deploy or support the engineering, the, uh, engineering work to uh, uh, to resolve the issue. Uh, so we've got a wide group of professionals who support the Navy and the Marine Corps across the missions. In the future I see NAFAC continuing to try to find ways to reduce the total ownership cost of Navy shore infrastructure. Uh, this is vitally important today as we have less resources and the demand for naval forces only continues to increase. We're continuing to be very focused on energy. We've got to find ways to reduce our energy demands and improve our energy security. Uh, this is an important critical capability that NAVFAC provides to the shore installations and we're laser focused on finding ways to do this more efficiently, more securely, and to better support the Navy mission. NAVFAC provides a, a number of uh, areas of support to expeditionary warfighters. Uh, we, we are the principal systems command supporting the expeditionary combat command and so we help to provide them with capabilities uh, purchase equipment, help sustain equipment for them so that they can have uh, a capability at the lowest cost. We provide reachback engineering services for things that may be required in theater. So for example, if you have a bridge and you need to figure out the best way to repair it, uh, we have the ability to reach back to professional engineers who can design and uh, assess the ability to put that bridge back in operation. Uh, we're also uh, closely supporting uh, Navy expeditionary units, for example, the SEALs, in determining new ways that they can operate uh, with less uh, dependence on fossil fuels. So for example, right now we're trying to field a new type of uh, water systems and battery systems that can help support them at their forward camps where, uh, where they can uh, uh, help to cut the tether to uh, fuel and other types of utility support. I think NAFAC touches sailors' lives in a variety of ways. Uh, the facility that they may live in, a barracks, was probably built uh, and is maintained by NAFAC. Uh, the sailor has uh, dependents, children. They may be uh, spending time in daycare in a child development center that NAFAC built. Um, the fitness center that they work out in uh, the facility that they might train in are all things that uh, NAFAC professionals have designed and built in order to support sailors, their families, and their ability to accomplish the mission. I think uh, the pieces of NAFAC's history that stand out the most are our support in different contingency environments that the, uh, that the Navy has uh, supported throughout the years. So during World War II, the design and construction that NAFAC did in supporting uh, the, uh, the war effort. Uh, most recently, uh, with the uh, closure of bases around the world, uh, the NAFAC has helped to do the design and construction for the consolidation of facilities. Most recently, uh, we were the construction agent for the new Walter Reed Bethesda Hospital, which opened about a year ago and supports wounded warriors coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq and other uh, conflicts around the world. And that was a major construction effort, about a billion dollars worth of uh, new facilities that provides world-class support uh, through the uh, Navy system to these warriors.
Well, NAFAC was founded in 1842. It was the Bureau of Yards and Docks, and its initial mission was to help build and sustain uh, the Navy shipyards at that time. So at the end of this month, on August 31st, will be the 170th anniversary of the Naval Facilities Engineering Command. Uh, 25 years later, in 1867, the Navy Civil Engineer Corps was founded. And this is a cadre of professional officers who help to lead uh, the Naval Facilities Engineering Command and also command uh, and uh, uh, serve in construction battalion units around the world. Uh, in 1942, Admiral Ben Morrell founded the Seabees, and this was the group of contingency engineers that could deploy into war zones uh, and do construction while also defending the work that they were doing and operating outside the wire. About uh, six years ago, we went through a major transformation where we realigned to better support the Navy uh, Installation Command and reduced our number of flagpoles by about 50 percent while singling up accountability and ensuring that we were providing the best and most economical support uh, to the Navy and the other commands that we support.